to the dear friends of this city, this church, this pastor, this great people, thank you, Reverend Emmanuel Whipple, for allowing me to occupy here for a very short while. I'm here with you to celebrate the home going of Vida Mae Pickens Hoy. She is our sister. We grew up together in Hartford Memorial Baptist Church, Detroit, Michigan. We were as close as blood relatives could be. We have always known them. We will always know them. And we will always thank God for the life and the work and the flowers, the beauty and the generosity of, I, of our dear friend, Sister Vita Mae Pickens Hoy. And I was present as one helping with the marriage of Vita Mae and her dearly beloved young man who was the one and only groom of her life. She was steady, consistent, faithful unto death, and she now wears a crown of life. Our condolences are extended to all of the members of the church and of our family, the Pickens family. And we want the Pickens family to know that we will always be joined in heart and hope to meet again. Vida May was an unusually devout believer in Christ and member of his church. She founded this church in her own heart and mind, and she was with it through thick and thin. I want to thank Pastor Emmanuel Whipple for allowing me to say just a little word. First, I want to say is that we're not here because she died. We're here because Vita Mae lived. She lived with strength, she lived with intention, she lived with durability and faithfulness unto death. She did not change her friends through the years. She did not change her husband. He was simply taken from labor to re reward just a couple of years ago. And she did not run around from church to church. We thank God that she found a man and she loved him. She found a church and she served it. She was looking for a savior or a savior was, savior was looking for her. And she followed him all the way across the river of Jordan to where she now stands in perfect joy, perfect peace, and perfect love. We thank God and praise God for her wonderful life in this world. We are determined not to give to death any more than we must give to death. We must give to death the physical remains of Vita Mae, but we do not have to give to death her immortal soul, her eternal sife, sife, self, her marvelous mind, and her sanctified spirit. We are not here to mourn the victory of death because Veth Death has no victory over anyone who is made in the image of God and blessed by the Spirit of God and blessed into the body of Christ. We are not here to mourn the victory of death, but we are here to celebrate the power of life. We do not ask of this, my beloved family, that which is impossible. We do not request that you not cry, Death is awesomely inevitable and terribly real, and we will miss the touch of her vanished hand and the sound of her reassuring voice that is now still. We dare not to say to you, do not cry, for even Jesus wept at the tomb of his brother Lazarus. There is a quality of cleansing and clarity and release and relief that come by way of honest tears. The immortal George Frederick 
for Frederick George Sampson II always says or said, tears are the relief valves that keep our hearts from breaking. God has placed in our hearts a lot of tears and they must be released in order to ease the pressure. I ask that you not grieve as others who have no hope. Realize that the chief end of humankind is to glorify God and praise him every day. We are here to think positively as Paul admonished us in Philippians, the fourth chapter and the eighth verse. Finally, my dear brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, whatever is excellence, if there be any excellence and if there be any thing that is lovely, think about these persons and these beautiful flowers. Now, we know that we must constantly give her her kudos, give her her praises in the spirit. Think about all the good that she is and continues to be in the life of Christ. Her integrity, her liveliness, her sanctity as a wife and a mother and a grandmother and a great-grandmother. Her humor as a friend and sister, her strength as an athlete, her courage as a leader, her mind as a teacher, her love as a neighbor, her commitment as a good friend, her sterling example as one who understood life and knew the power and goodness of God. Life did not defeat her. Death cannot destroy her. So do not think down in agony or back with regret or forward with fear, but think up in praise and the power of God will be with you. I want you to know that we are not the captains of our souls. We are not the masters of our fate. We are those who follow Jesus and trust wherever he leads. I, know, I want you to know that in this world we will sometimes have to bid each other farewell, but we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. We thank God for giving us a wonderful sister that we loved and that love doesn't return. She encouraged us, and we are here to encourage her family because her family is our family, and we have always been united in times good and bad. And we realize that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. We thank God that if we look around us, we will always be grateful if we look behind us. We will hear the footsteps of Jesus on our trail. If we look out beyond us, we know she's somewhere in the shadows, keeping watch over our spirits. She is an immortal soul. She is a person who can never die. For Jesus said, if you believe in me, I will give you the power to live and not die. And we thank her that as long as we live, we will remember her as an example of helping us through this life. For we have understood during the times that we've thought about people that we can rely upon. We know that we have some mountains we can't move. We have some sicknesses we can't heal. We have some problems we can't revolve. We have some injustices we can't prevent. We have doors we can't open and addictions we can't break. 
sorrows we can't comfort, dangers we can't dodge, wars we can't stop, questions we can't answer, but be of good cheer. For Jesus says, I have overcome the world and even death itself. So please, please wake up, think up, look up, reach up, pray up, stand up, rise up, get up, go up, keep up, stay up, but don't ever, don't ever give up because the Lord of hosts is with you and the God of Jacob is your refuge. And we know that God is still God. And God is still in charge of everything, even death itself. Do you remember Isaiah? Isaiah said, wait on the Lord, and he will renew your strength. You will mount up with wings as eagles. You shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. Do not faint. Don't spend all your time crying. Spend some time thanking God for all of her gifts that she poured out in the desert edges of our lives at their worth. worth. But she has left this place. She has left this place and she's gone to another place. Would you deny her her greatest joy for which she lived and worked so hard? Lift up your head. Lift up your soul. There's never been anyone like her. I've never known anyone that cheerful, never complaining, not even about the onslaught of death. She said, I'll be all right. And she is right. She taught with proficiency. She loved with intensity. She worshiped with ecstasy. She died in dignity. She woke up in eternity and she's living in victory. And she's better off being with Jesus than with us. But we shall soon meet again. We know that death is not the end of us, but life is our eternal destiny. She taught with proficiency. She loved with intensity. She worshiped with ecstasy. She died in dignity. She woke up in eternity, and she's living in victory. And she's gone to a great place a wonderful place, a place that is fairer than day and better than any earthly day we could hope to see. And she's gone to a land that's better than this land. She's gone to a land that is fairer than day, the land where there are no lights, for there is no night. There are no armies, for there is no war. There are no cops, because there is no crime. There are no ambulances because there are no accidents. There are no laws because there are no violations. There are no schools for there is no ignorance. There are no banks because there's no more borrowing. A land where there are no walls for there are no exclusions. A land where there are no deceptions for there is no shame. A land where there are no umbrellas for there's no more rain. No guards, for there is no fear. No doctors, for there is no sickness. No nurses, for there is no pain. No hearses, for there are no funerals. No undertakers, because there's no more death. No handkerchiefs, for there are no more tears. No more preaching, because there's no more sin. And when we have been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we have no less days to sing God's praise than when we first began. Lift up your heads, be cheerful. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. My dear family, rejoice in the Lord always. Do not let anything destroy your joy or kill the life of your spirit and realize that after a while we will separate but we'll meet again in that land that is fairer than day for the wicked shall cease from troubling the weary will be at rest and every day 
will be Sunday, and the Sabbath shall have no end. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. God be with you till we meet again. When we asunder part, it gives us inward pain, but we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. Good night. I'll see you in the morning.